In this third example of looking at two-dimensional equilibrium, we have an actual truss bridge that started off its life as a railroad bridge and then later was converted um, in 1953 by the Missouri Highway Department to a, a highway bridge. And so we're going to look at this from the, con the context of just looking at the reactions. Uh, later we'll look at the internal forces that develop in each of the members, but here only just the reactions. And from that three-dimensional reality, we're going to create an abstraction, or a model in other words, two-dimensional model of this truss. Notice we got lines where the members are located, and then we have, if we look at a close detail of the supports, a pin support at one end and a roller support at the other. Typically, the self-weight of the bridge is small in comparison to the live loads, at least for a short, relatively short span as we have here, a 100-foot span. And so what you see is represented is a specific location of traffic going across the bridge, 100 kips at joint B, 100 kips at joint C. Notice we have 25 foot in between those joints as a common pattern. That's called the panel from point to point in this particular uh, Waddell A truss. Right? And just like in every <coughs> statics problem, we start with a free body diagram. And some people like to simplify their free body diagram down into just its bare essence. And when they do that, they will then represent not so much the internal workings of the structure, but rather they'll do a simplification of the sort of outline of the truss the critical kinds of pieces. And that's okay. I don't particularly care for it. I like to go ahead and take the time to do the rest of it. It just seems like there's something missing if I don't include all this interior work. You know, a simple bridge like this, it's not really that big a deal. Um, in a bigger truss, of course, you might not want to do what I just did. You might just want to sort of scribble through the middle. Um, but here we've got the applied loads of 100 kips at those two joints. And then at the roller, since the roller is a uh, on a horizontal plane, we replace that roller when we strip it off with a possible reaction value in the vertical direction, perpendicular to the plane. Over at the pin, we're going to put two independent uh, reaction components. And we can reasonably guess what's going to happen with these uh, reaction components that in this particular case with these loads being applied in the middle and the supports at the outer edges it's reasonable to anticipate that they're both acting in an upwards direction so over here to the right at the roller that's E so I'll call it E sub Y and then over at the pin support I've got a vertical that's A sub Y and even though you might regard that the horizontal is a trivial one and that its value you can tell right off the bat is going to be uh, zero. I'm going to still go ahead and draw it and pretend that I don't know that it's going to turn out to be zero and just show a direction to the right. It could have been any direction that you wanted uh, to use. And then <clears throat> from here, once we got a properly drawn free body diagram and with the goal to find the reactions, we're going to do that <clears throat> using our equilibrium equations. And you always have to ask, do we have a concurrent force system or do we have a non-concurrent force system? In other words, do all the forces pass through a common point or not? If not, it's a non-concurrent force system. That means we have three independent equations of equilibrium. And so one of the trivial ones would be to just go directly at some of the forces in the X. You got to choose a sign convention for that equation. It has nothing to do with the global structure. It's just whatever you want it to be. X is the horizontal direction. I'll take to the right as positive. I only have one term. That's AX. And that's how you prove that AX actually is zero. Remember that this whole equation has to be set equal to zero for equilibrium. And so therefore AX equals zero. That'd be equation number one. Equation number two. Let's write one that we can get another one uh, unknown in the equation. And let's go after EY. But we've got these other two reaction components, but if I sum moments about point A, choose counterclockwise as positive, and you'll see Y in a moment. And i got to go left to right here. AX and AY pass through point A, so they have a zero moment arm. I'm not going to bother to write them. We've got 100 kips that has a moment arm of 25 with respect to point A 
and note that it, if I put the pin here at A, then that 100, first 100 tip load, the one coming from B, is going to tend to want to spin the body on, you know, remember, put the body on a hot, uh, air hockey table, and it's going to want to spin the body in a clockwise manner, which is opposite of our sign convention for plus. So that means that in that term, I get a minus sign. Likewise for the second one, but it picks up a 50 kip or 50 foot moment arm. And then finally I have 100 feet times EY. And so that again is set equal to zero. We solve for EY. There's 100 times uh, 25. <clears throat> so that's 2,500. There's uh, 5,000, so that's 7,500. And then divided by 100. And so ultimately you're going to get that. EY is equal to 75 kips plus in this particular notation means that it's in the same direction as we've shown on the free by diagram and so it is acting up. That gives us EY. Now we could do sum of forces in the Y. It's a nice simple easy one to write. Lots of people will do that. I will instead choose to do sum of moments about point E because it gives me an independent way to come up with a Y that doesn't use intermediate results. And so let's now do clockwise as positive and we'll have 100 times a Y minus 100 times 75 foot to go from B all the way over to E and that's a perpendicular distance so I'm good there. Minus 100 times the 50 foot and we set that equal then to zero for equilibrium. And we then, of course, <coughs> see we've got, okay, we've got, um, that's 5,000, that's 7,500, so a, a total of <coughs> then when divided by 100, the AY is 125 kips uh, acting up. Okay, and so. We found them all. It's always good to come back now and summarize this in a nice, clean way that we have AX equals zero. We have EY equal 75 kips acting up. And we have AY equal to 125 kips also acting up.